Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com, and today I'm going to show you how to build a synth brass patch. This is the type of patch that was used for horn lines, um, oftentimes in the 1980s. You can hear sounds like this on Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance with Somebody or Taylor Dane's Tell It to My Heart. So this is what the patch sounds like. <laughs> And Taylor Dane uses it more as a call and response to her vocal line. Um, Van Halen also uses it in their iconic jump lead line. So those are some places you can hear how this is used in context. But for now, we're going to jump in using analog to build it. Make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of the happenings and let's dive in. So we're gonna start by dragging in an empty uh, default version of analog. Now before I start building anything, I always have to ask myself the question, what is the shape of this sound? What does a synth brass sound sound like? That's gonna help us take some steps. So if I were to describe this sound, it's got a very sharp, immediate starting sound, right? It's a little bit buzzier at the very beginning um, when you have a horn section hit, and then it comes down ever so slightly. Also, higher notes tend to be a little bit louder than lower notes. Um, there is some variation to the pitch when a note is held out. So these are all things that we need to consider. Now, let's talk about how we're going to set up analog. So analog has two oscillators, but since we are making a mono sound, um, we are not going to use the second output here. So we can quickly make sure that it is set up that way by choosing this quick, quick routing on the bottom left. Um, all right, let's have a listen to this default patch. <laughs> sounds nothing at all like synth brass. So let's start by adding that punch at the beginning. We're going to do that by using the filter. Now, I'm choosing a low pass 12 dB filter because I want to take off some of the high end, but I'm actually using this to bring out those higher register harmonics. So I don't want to pull them completely out. So we'll just do a little bit. Um, and I'm going to pull this back. So just as a sustained synth sound, it's going to sit here. And I'm going to add some resonance, which is boosting those frequencies. Now, how do we get that snap? Well, we're going to use the filter envelope to control that snap. So in this area below, you'll see this here. And this is the envelope. It's got the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. Um, our attack should be pretty fast. So I'm going to put this just under 100. We don't need any sustain. And I'm going to actually make it so this envelope is only slightly controlling it. Because more than the envelope, we want the higher keys to actually open that filter even more. So we can make that happen by coming down here and adding some key tracking. This is just going to mean that as I move up the keyboard, the filter is going to open a little bit more. Now, when we think about a brass sound, there is a little bit of variation to the pitch, right? Especially on sustained notes. So we're going to add that by detuning our second oscillator here, which you can just do by bringing down. Amazing. Now there's a bit of a decrease in volume, so I'm going to bump this volume up substantially, and I'm going to pull the master volume down substantially. I think for this patch, I just would rather have it set up this way, although that's not always uh, the best way to go about doing it. All right, so we've got this guy here. Let's set up our amp envelope to also have a bit of an attack. And we don't want it to drop down, so we'll bring the sustain all the way up. And pop this release sound back a little bit. Alright, we're getting there, but... I think something that will add a little bit of 
interestingness to this sound is if we have real pitch variation coming in. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on oscillator 1, and I want oscillator 1 to approach what pitches I'm playing from above. And that takes a little bit too long, so I'm going to decrease the time it takes. I'm going to do the opposite from below, but even more extreme. Yep, we're getting there. So we also need to have it change sort of organically over time, right? Because we want this to get close. Now, granted, it's still going to have some qualities of a synthesizer because it is a synthesizer, but we're trying to get it close. So we need to have something change gradually over time, and the easiest way to do that is by using an LFO. So we can go ahead and turn this LFO on here, and we'll go back to um, Analog's first oscillator here, and we are just going to add a little bit of pitch modulation from this LFO. So you can hear it's kind of changing the pitch. If I turn this up, you can hear it's happening. And all of these little changes are just going to start to add up over time, right? But we don't actually want that to start right away. So I'll pull this attack. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean that it's going to wait a little bit before it starts modulating the pitch. So we get that initial attack, and then the LFO starts to come in after it on the sustain. All right. Now let's add some vibrato to make this sound a little bit more I still kind of wish that I was having a little bit more of like a breath on the attack. So I'm going to bring this up a touch. friends we just built a synth patch in analog make sure that you like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of my latest videos and if you want more information on sound design you can check out my full sound design course at livekeyboardist.com forward slash sound design course all right see you guys next week